os gás com flash. Os gaming do os gás com o app. Do Zoom Smash. E é isso aí. Não é mim? Não é mim? Os gás com o os gás com o app. Eu amo você, yo. Eu estou te dizendo isso. Sim, TD Jakes é Kim Porter. Então você me diga o que eles estavam fazendo. I'm not going to talk express how I feel about that because I don't want to. Panda is, a really. Panda is a secret code for um, a certain thing. Um, and so when it comes down to that certain thing, um, it's so what it is, is uh, you basically have a certain nerve in your rectum. And if you touch that nerve, you can turn a person into an animal. You can turn a person into whatever you want them to be if you just hold them down. We made love. We made love. Who you made love with? Diddy, Bow Wow, um, Buster Ron. Wow, you guys, if you thought it couldn't get any worse, it actually does. Diddy's being hit with another essay lawsuit, but this time from a former male employee. And he's saying that Diddy would touch him inappropriately. You struggling? You're struggling with them push-ups. They always want you to, you know what these rappers are always saying? It's all these big rappers y'all y'all look up to. They always tell you what the good part about, but you, they never tell you what the bad part. That's just, that, and that's crazy, man. Yeah, they got all this money, but get they, 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 they dealing with emo spirits. I don't owe them more. You owe me 60 bands? Or if you have to perform the song right now in the crib, what are we talking about? What are you talking about? I'm giving you an out. Puff Daddy. It's the king yeah. of deception. Yeah. Every time we was in the party, oh, he was throwing his f***ing champagne, his, his vodka in every picture. He was, he was, just, so we didn't know. We like, yo, he's a great guy. This is a great party. This is a great, yo, give me your clothes. I'm gonna rock it in the video. Yo, 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 yo. Sean John sold 400 million. Champagne, this, 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 the, the, this, this. Boy, the joke's on us. Yeah. He been doing this real yeah and we can't be mad at him we always got to use them as inspiration one night uh when they were at, at home at kim's house on 110th street he wanted to you know put his hands on her in the wrong way and kim took one of those court screws and ripped his wrists up he, and hit an artery and when she did that he had to rush over to st luke's hospital i met him over there to the hospital it was me him and kim in the hospital when he was bleeding like crazy. When she wasn't taking that, she wasn't gonna take that ass whooping and she got him off of him the best way she could. A shocked and devastated Diddy spotted at the home where his ex suddenly and mysteriously died. Her good friend Kimora Lee Simmons appearing inconsolable at the house, 47-year-old Porter's body found after a desperate call to 911. We will begin to see people having terminal illnesses being sick, uh, b being passed away, and will start to have legal trouble. Let me dive into this. So y'all know how it just was released that Kris Jenner and Corey Gamble had something to do with Diddy recently. If you go look, Corey Gamble um, had some dealings with Diddy. Puffy, right? His baby mom, Kim Porter, right? She got a whole lot of Tupac related posts on her IG. She's right next to Puffy and she's wearing the Tupac shirt. Did Tupac and Kim Porter know each other? Andre was writing a book right before he died. Heavy D was working on a book before he died. Kim Porter was working on a book before she died. And Al B. Shore was working on the documentary of his life. And then he goes into a coma. Kim and Kim still continue dating, and it is said that allegedly Kim told him a lot of personal information about Diddy. Nobody knows what that information was, but allegedly it was about Diddy's involvement in certain things and uh, additional intimate information about Diddy. But what I absolutely love about Kim Porter is back in the day when Diddy left Kim Porter for JLo, Kim Porter supposedly didn't even react to it. She caught pictures of him like online with him and JLo and they were out at like clubs and parties together. And that's how she found out he was cheating on her. Um, and apparently she said nothing. And that ate away at Diddy. Supposedly he was just waiting for Kim to react. He wanted her attention and she just wouldn't give it to him. I mean, I think we have the strongest being. Like if it comes to like a category of who's the strongest being on the face of the earth. 
they would have to be black mothers. And maybe Kim liked him, Pac more than he liked Puff, but she couldn't have Pac. The only two left are Puffy and Al, and Al almost died. Isn't that interesting? That is interesting. Heavy D was found dead face down in the heart attack. Andre Harrell, heart attack. Kim died from pneumonia, but there's the first coroner's report that said that she died. It, it was ruled a homicide and they found toxins in her body to prove that she had been poisoned. You know, they, they have poisons that create heart attack and pneumonia like. Maybe Kim liked Tim. Pac more than he liked Puff, but she couldn't have Pac. And Pac didn't have the money that Puff had. Kim died from pneumonia, but there's the first coroner's report that said that she died. It, it was ruled a homicide and they found toxins in her body to prove that she had been poisoned. He financed and supported the same thing he did with Cassidy, Cassie, it's the same thing he did with Kim. We started writing a song and I was like, I feel like I really want to make sure she gets the message. And I called John Legend. I was like, John, I need you to sing to the heavens above. Panda serves as a cryptic term for a certain undisclosed matter. It involves a specific nerve located in the rectum that, when stimulated, allegedly has the power to transform a person's behavior drastically, making them highly suggestible or malleable. In this context, there's a claim tying T.D. Jakes to Kim Porter in a vague, suggestive manner. Furthermore, the narrative dives into allegations surrounding Diddy, suggesting he faced accusations from a former male employee about inappropriate behavior. This account paints a picture of the darker, unspoken realities, allegedly faced by some individuals in the entertainment industry, despite their public personas suggesting otherwise. It also recounts a specific violent incident at Kim's residence on 1110th Street, where she reportedly defended herself against an assault by using a corkscrew, leading to a severe injury that necessitated a hospital visit. The story concludes by reflecting on the public image of celebrities like Diddy, contrasting their perceived charisma and generosity at parties with the private complexities and challenges they face, symbolized by the misleading allure of his actions at social events. Sean John sold 400 million bottles of champagne. Yes, the joke's on us. He's been doing this for real, and rather than being envious, we should see him as a source of inspiration. There's an emerging pattern of individuals suffering from terminal illnesses, facing legal issues, or tragically passing away. Let's delve deeper into this, especially with the recent revelations around Kris Jenner and Corey Gamble's connections to Diddy. Recently, an utterly shocked Diddy was seen at the home where his ex, Kim Porter, mysteriously died. Her close friend, Kimora Lee Simmons, appeared inconsolable at the scene. At the age of 47, Porter's body was discovered following a frantic 911 call. Intriguingly, others like Andre Harrell and Heavy D were also in the midst of writing books before their untimely deaths. Albie, sure, was working on a documentary about his life when he suddenly fell into a coma. Focusing on Kim Porter, she had numerous Tupac-related posts on her Instagram. Interestingly, she was often pictured next to Diddy, sometimes even wearing a Tupac shirt. This raises the question, did Tupac and Kim Porter know each other? What I find truly admirable about Kim is how she handled her relationship with Diddy, especially during the time Diddy left her for JLO. Despite discovering his infidelity through pictures of him with JLO at clubs and parties, Kim chose to remain silent. This lack of reaction supposedly gnawed at Diddy. He craved her attention, yet she gave him none. Despite this, Kim and Diddy continued their relationship, and it's alleged that Kim shared sensitive 
sensitive personal information about Diddy with others, details of his involvement in undisclosed activities, and other intimate information. The speculation is intriguing. Perhaps Kim had a stronger affection for Tupac than he had for Diddy. Yet, reflecting on strength, if we consider who the strongest beings on Earth are, it would undoubtedly be black mothers. This entire narrative shows that Kim might have harbored deeper feelings for Tupac than for Diddy, but circumstances prevented anything from developing further. She couldn't match the financial power that Puff had. Pac didn't have that kind of money. The only two remaining were Puffy and Al, and Al almost lost his life. Isn't that intriguing? It is indeed interesting. Heavy D was found deceased, lying face down after a heart attack. Andre Harrell also succumbed to a heart attack. Kim passed away from pneumonia, yet the initial coroner's report suggested homicide, revealing toxins in her body indicative of poisoning. There are poisons known to mimic symptoms of heart attacks and pneumonia. This pattern of support and finance was seen with Cassidy and Kim. When writing a song, I felt compelled to ensure the message was clear, so I reached out to John Lay to convey it through music. Orlando Brown set the internet ablaze with his shocking revelation about Diddy's methods of luring victims into participating in his alleged Illuminati rituals to enhance his wealth and fame. Recent allegations have surfaced about Diddy's manipulative behavior, particularly toward naive young men under the guise of mentorship. Orlando claimed that Diddy coerced him into one of these ritualistic engagements, a factor contributing to Orlando's severe mental health and substance issues. Despite numerous victims coming forward and a trail of individuals forced into these alleged Illuminati activities, Diddy remains uncharged, protected by industry forces. Some even speculate that Kim Porter's death was merely a ritualistic act to further enrich Diddy, noting that at her funeral, attendees were kept away from the casket. Orlando Brown, known for his role in Disney's That's So Raven, saw a promising career ahead. However, his mental health deteriorated rapidly after the show ended in 2007, the same year he was arrested for substance possession in Houston, which he denied owning. Later, he faced DUI charges and was imprisoned for 27 days after failing to prove completion of a mandated alcohol education program. A disturbing audio leak involving Orlando threatened a woman and her family's safety. He entered rehab in 2016, but relapsed, leading to another arrest in 2018. These events led to speculation that Orlando's troubles stemmed from forced participation in Illuminati practices within the industry. Orlando confirmed seeing disturbing things that traumatized him during a candid interview. He also accused Diddy of personal misconduct and attempting to recruit him into ritualistic activities, which Orlando described as sexual assault occurring multiple times. Diddy didn't limit these alleged introductions to Illuminati rituals to just Orlando. YK Osiris was also rumored to be initiated when he vacationed secretly with Diddy in Jamaica in 2021. YK posted suggestive photos during this trip, including a shirtless Diddy in a pool and himself receiving a massage naked, hinting at an initiation-like experience orchestrated by Diddy. There are allegations suggesting that a certain level of closeness developed between them during a trip, which, if true, might clarify his seemingly random decision to associate Diddy with the scenario. The idea is that the Illuminati assists in advancing the careers of its members, so his gratitude towards Diddy for an introduction to this secretive circle seems plausible. Additionally, there were suspicions around BRZ here Gray, believed to have been brought into this fold by Diddy and Will Smith. Initially discovered by talent manager Charlie Mack, BRZ here was steered towards an audition for the role of Hakeem in Empire, a role that significantly propelled his career. Charlie introduced him to Will Smith for further mentoring to boost his prospects in Hollywood. After this introduction, Will Smith connected BRZ here to Diddy to foster his rap aspirations. But this mentorship reportedly took a dark turn. At the time, Many were unaware of the disturbing nature of this connection due to limited information about Diddy. 
It's alleged that Will and Diddy were not just mentoring, but manipulating BRZ here under the guise of guidance, a claim later supported by Jaguar Wright. She accused them of luring young talents with promises of mentorship, only to subject them to bizarre, ritualistic practices linked to the Illuminati. This culminated in an incident where Meek Mill, along with BRZ here, reportedly fled from Will Smith's residence in terror after one such session. Furthermore, there have been discussions about Diddy's possible initiation of Meek Mill into these disturbing activities. A particularly unsettling audio, supposedly recorded by one of Diddy's former bodyguards during a painful moment for Meek Mill, was later attributed to Nicki Minaj, adding layers of confusion and intrigue to the narrative. These narratives paint a picture of deceit where Diddy allegedly promises immense career advancement, only to entangle these artists in deleterious situations. Post their association with Diddy, many artists like Orlando have faced significant personal and professional decline, entangled in legal troubles and addiction, their careers left in disarray. Moreover, there are troubling allegations surrounding the untimely death of Diddy's former partner, Kim Porter, initially reported as due to pneumonia. Contradictory autopsy findings suggested potential poisoning, leading to further investigation, which was abruptly halted when the coroner was removed from the case under mysterious circumstances. This has fueled speculation that her death might have been a sacrifice, a claim supported by one of Kim's close friends who suggested Diddy's involvement in dark spiritual practices and described Kim as a sacrificial figure within this context. One scenario involved them presiding over pneumonia, while another individual asserted, regardless of what anyone claims, Sean Diddy Combs orchestrated sacrifices involving Christopher Wallace and Kim Porter do you believe that any of the individuals he supposedly sacrificed will ever recover fully? You all have known what actions to take. Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. Also, don't forget to click here to view another highly controversial video.